Hello everybody, this is Ronar, and today we're going to be playing XCOM 2 War of the Chosen, so let's get ready for it. We're going to be playing on Legendary Iron Man, and we won't be enabling any of the advanced options right now, so it's just going to be a pure vanilla War of the Chosen experience. We will, however, enable the tutorial mission, that way we can start off fighting against the Assassin, which most people seem to have the most trouble with. So, let us begin, and let's get ready for some action. Alright then, let's get started here. Sky Ranger has touched down, and we are ready to begin the mission. All four of our wacky XCOM soldiers are ready for action. So let's begin. Now, the first thing that you have to know for Gatecrasher is that there are three pods of enemies, one group of three troopers, one group of a sectoid and one trooper, and then finally a group of captain and double trooper. The captain is naturally the most dangerous one of them all. He has 75 accuracy, and he does 3 to 4 damage. That's like Thin Man level stats there. Now, we found the first pod right here, Triple Troopers. You'll usually find them pretty early on. With Rookies, you always want to take the high ground and try to use that to your advantage in killing enemies. Rookies only have 65 aim. That's like a one-third chance of miss your shots whenever you take a flank shot, and that's just not okay. So let's just move everyone all the way upwards. We are in the high ground. That means we get a plus 20 aim bonus against enemies. That basically negates half cover, actually, which is really, really good for us. Now, the best way to engage on the first pod, in my opinion, is actually just taking the um, just taking the overwatch from concealment shots. This is because when you overwatch from concealment, you don't actually have an overwatch penalty. I normally don't actually like overwatch from concealment because you want to be able to react with your soldiers' abilities when they miss shots and stuff, but because these are rookies, all they can do is shoot or throw grenades. Grenades is like the guaranteed answer against regular troopers, but you want to save your grenades for the captain though. So I would say this is probably one of the best ways to start off against the triple trooper pod. Overwatch from concealment through high cover. High ground. So we're going to be taking a shot over there. One shot over there does kill that guy. We've got three other shots that have no penalty applied to them, so they're basically flank shots minus the crit chance. One shot over there does actually nail him right through the giant brick thingy. Another shot right over there, and he goes down. Now, you might not always get so lucky. You'll usually kill at least two of them. Sometimes one of them survives. I've had that in the past before. As long as you're not in a position where he, the last guy can flank you, he'll actually either run away to his teammates or take a shot. At worst, he can do three damage to one of your guys, but three damage is the most they can do with 0% chance to crit, so we will be fine no matter what. Now, what we're going to do here is we're going to take this time to overwatch, reload, and do all that stuff, and prepare for the sectoid pod next. Sectoid or captain pod, depending on which one patrols into us first. Now, what we should do is we should sit here and just overwatch very carefully until we are ready to engage. So let's make sure our group is tightly knit. You don't actually have to be within cover because when a pod patrols into you, they actually have to take one action to scamper and then they have to wait a turn before they can actually shoot you. So that is something that a lot of beginner XCOM players don't realize, and they're always taking the time to put their soldiers behind cover in inoptimal situations. It doesn't really matter too much, but sometimes on a timed mission when you really need a person further forward, you really don't want to be taking the time to only do half your blue move into cover rather than like your blue move all the way out into the open. Now what we're going to do is we're going to move up nice and slow, making sure that we are ready to take care of the captain pod if he activates while trying to retain the high ground for as long as we can. So let's take this time to overwatch again, and we're just going to slow crawl forward until we actually encounter some enemies. Now, whenever you get a map with the monument, it's actually fairly easy. Because what you can do is move all the way up to the monument if you know that the last two pods are right back there. So you can get as close as possible. It is in XCOM's best interest to engage as close to the enemies as they can. Still no activation. Alright. That means we just continue to slow overwatch crawl, making sure not to make any moves that will reveal more fog than the first person has moved. Because in this case, everyone's already used up half an action. If I move somewhere up like here further forward than the first guy who's already moved, then we are going to reveal more fog, and if we do pull the captain, everyone here only has a move to actually get into cover and not react to actually fight them. So that is very important that we don't reveal any more than the person all the way in the front. 
And by reveal, I mean reveal more fog. Now, it seems like all the enemies are right back there. We can move all the way up, I think. All the way up to there, probably. Nice work. It is in XCOM's best interest to get as close as possible. Point blank is where XCOM excels. Enemies don't get range bonuses, but XCOM does. Enemies also don't get good angle bonuses, but they do get high ground bonuses. That's something to keep in mind. Now, interestingly enough, we still have not found the captain. Let's just take this time to plant the objective. And then we'll keep on going from there. We want to make sure that we try to activate the captain away from the sectoids, though. That's actually very important. Having to fight triple troopers plus a captain and a sectoid is actually a huge pain. So what we're going to do is we're going to run backwards right now and activate the captain because apparently he was right there. Oh my goodness, we activated everything. Having to fight triple troopers plus a captain and a sectoid is actually a huge pain. All right, here we go. Got a captain and trooper. Or are they active? Yes, they are active. Okay, let's get ready for this. We're gonna have to deal with Captain along with Triple Trooper, which kind of sucks for us, but there's not much we can do about that. So let's begin. Now, first things first, we want to kill that Captain. Captain is the most dangerous one of them all. He can actually mark us and make us very easy to hit. So let's start with the shot right there. Does actually connect. We can guarantee the kill with a grenade, so that is pretty good. Now, this guy over here can actually get another grenade onto these guys if he really wants to, but that's not really the important thing right now. The important thing is making sure that Captain just does not live. Um, we also have to keep in mind that these troopers can flank us from back here, probably. Yeah, I believe he can run up to here and flank, so back here is not safe. You gotta really be mindful as to where enemies can move when you make moves like these. So I think the best option right now is for us to get into full cover and delete the enemies that matter. So whenever you're in a breakdown situation like this where there's more than you can actually handle, you want to make sure you kill as many things as you can. Just make sure as little things are shooting back at you as possible. Otherwise bad things will happen to your team. So let's delete another trooper just for good measure. One grenade all the way up there. And there we go. Three damage on that guy. We can finish him off with one more grenade, actually. I don't want to rely on the 67, but we have to rely on it, so we'll take that 67. We are in half cover, but I think it's more important that we kill more troopers rather than get inside full cover. Now, one trooper moves all the way up. Let's see what he does. He is going to take the shot at the guy in the half cover. One shot does not connect. That means the last shot definitely will not kill. Troopers are dangerous when they are shooting in bulk. You really don't want to let them shoot in bulk, especially if you're in half cover. Now, he does actually get the damage off on us while we're in full cover, but... All that's left is the sectoid, and we don't have to worry about him anymore. We should be able to just walk up and kill this guy, no problems at all. So next turn, let's make sure we deal with the sectoid. Gotta make sure the sectoid is dead, otherwise we are going to have a really bad time. Now, let me try to explain breakdown situations for you guys, and what just happened last turn. So, last turn, what happened was really bad, because we activated the captain and the sectoid pod, which really sucks when they're all clumped together. But, um, when you're in a battle, in an engagement with enemies, you want to make sure as few of them shoot you as possible, and you can do this in one of three ways. The first way is just killing them, making sure they're all dead. The second way is understanding their AI trees, knowing that the sectoid will never shoot at a person unless he gets a flank. So as long as we don't let the sectoid flank us, he'll always summon a zombie or go for psionics. That's the next most important thing to realize. Then after that is making sure you don't pull any more pods, and in this case, we already pulled all the pods that there were on the map, we know how many enemies there are on Gatecrasher, so in that, in this case, that wasn't really as important. But that might be important in the future, though, so keep that in mind, guys. Now, we've got double grenades, and we can take a shot. So I think we need to take shots right now. How do we get these shots going? I think the first way to handle this is by getting... We gotta make sure this trooper can't flank us. If he runs all the way back here, which I bet he could, he can get the flank on us. But we need to flank the insectoid, so I think moving into this spot over here is the safest spot for you. Into the half cover, just like that. Take that 78 on that sectoid. Please land it. We really need to land the shot right now, because we have really no choice but to land that shot. We do land that shot, which is pretty dang lucky, actually. Now, this person has 1 HP, otherwise I'd move them up into that half cover up there, but that's not really the safest option right now. So the other option right now is to run up to the sectoid and shoot him, or double grenade him. I think... Double grenading him is a safe option, but that doesn't stop the troopers from shooting at us. And if we get a little bit unlucky, they can both land their shots on Baron Mad and she will die. So I think what really actually has to happen is... You need to move up to this spot, 
score the kill on this guy, and then we can double grenade one of the troopers. So let's get Taiga up here. Let's take the shot right there. Go for it. 84. Average damage will kill. Average damage does kill. Nice work. We got lucky there. If we had missed that shot, then we would double grenade the sectoid. Never take YOLO flanks like these without having a backup plan, because if you don't have a backup plan and you miss that shot, you're going to be in for a bad time. So... Now, all that's left is to deal with that trooper up there. Let's keep more people in half cover, so if we're lucky, they'll choose to shoot at other people. They're most likely going to shoot at her because they want her dead, and there's not much we can do about that. But we could try to influence their AI a little bit more. Their AI. Now then, one grenade all the way up there does connect. We can move up once again. And with this last move up here, we are going to guarantee that this guy here dies. So one grenade all the way over there. We can also get a little bit of a grenade onto his cover over there, although I don't think that'll really matter too much. He's just gonna move anyways. And now he will shoot at Taigia. If we get lucky, she'll live. If we don't, she'll die. And we do get lucky and she does live. Now, the thing about troopers and why fighting close up to them is more beneficial for your team is because your team actually gets aim bonuses. We get weapon range plus something. They don't get that, and nor do they get um, good angle bonuses and other things like that. So that's something to keep in mind. Now, at this point, um, the smart option would be to dash all the way back behind full cover and then break line of sight make sure that he can't see your people. So we would have to dash like to this spot, this spot, this spot, this spot, this spot, or this spot with everyone. When the AI can't see any of your soldiers, they tend to make really awkward moves like dashing straight up to you guys so you guys can kill him cleanly next turn rather than taking the two 85% and possibly missing both of them. That, that is a possibility or not, just not doing enough damage to kill him. But this is Gatecrasher, there's no reason to actually waste the time um, playing safely here. If we lose, we can just restart the first mission, so let's get everyone all the way up. And just take clean shots at this guy. One shot over there, oh man, already? Uh, my self-fulfilling prophecy is coming true, come on. There we go. And mission accomplished, nice work to the squad. Let's head on back home and get ready for the strategy lair. All right then, the squad is back home. Now, let's see what our three rookies get promoted into. I'm really hoping this person does not end up being the Ranger or the Grenadier. That's so important. Rangers and Grenadiers are so important to have on the first few missions when you're only allotted four soldiers on your team. So good, we got the Ranger. That's really awesome. Specialist, damn it. Specialist is the worst class. I was hoping the injured person was a specialist. That's fine though. And Sharpshooter, alright. So we don't get the Grenadier for the first mission, which is arguably, in my opinion, the best class early on. And then the Ranger slightly overtakes it as you slowly go through the campaign. But, there we go. Let's keep on going right now. Now for research, most people like to rush mag weapons. It doesn't really matter in my opinion, as long as you're playing the game right. As long as you're conducting this tactical lair properly can't really lose the campaign, even if you squad wipe once or twice in the mid game, you'll still pull through. But um, I'm gonna go for alien biotech this time around, just so I can rush the proving grounds. Or not exactly rush, but get early proving grounds. First building that you always build is GTS, no questions about it, having squad size 1 is just so important. When you have squad sizes of 4, if one person dies you lose 25% of your fighting strength, that is so painful to lose a person. Like, if you lose a person early on in a mission, you probably aren't completing that mission. Now, you always build a one flashbang early on, and only flashbang. None of that medkit stuff, none of that smoke grenade stuff. Flashbang only to disable enemies such as sectoids from mind controlling their teammates. And with that, I'm just gonna take a look through our armory really fast and just take a look at our teammates. Hey look, we got Jane Kelly. Alright, but there we go, that's our roster, whole bunch of rookies. Let's keep on going. Alright then. So, first thing to scan for are supplies. I find that supplies and income increasing scans are usually the worst. You'll get plenty of supplies in Legendary as opposed to in Commander Difficulty and Below. Because in Commander Difficulty and Below, your research times are halved. Or rather, in Legendary, your research times are doubled, your excavation times are doubled also, meaning you won't be getting the chance to build your stuff as quickly, so you'll be spending your cash a little bit slower. Rookies are a pretty good early game one. The ones that you really want are like engineers, things like that. Unfortunately, we won't be getting an engineer besides through this mission, so that's fine. Now, 
The first mission really kind of matters a lot. If you get um, Execute Field Commander, it's actually a very, very difficult one. <laughs> we got Hack Resistance Computers, which is actually also fairly difficult. You don't really get a lot of time for these. It's a really good thing that we actually have our specialist for this one, because hacking from a range is going to be a really good help for this mission. So here's our squad. We'll bring our Sharpshooter, we'll bring our Ranger along with the specialist, and that will be our team. I kind of wish that we had the Grenadier instead of the Sharpshooter, but that's completely fine. Let's get out there, boys. And before I forget, let's actually make sure we have that flashbang that we built. Now, I'm going to give the flashbang to the Sharpshooter. So how this works is if a Sectoid mind controls someone, you can easily just flashbang him, and then you're fine. Now, if a Sectoid mind controls the Sharpshooter, and we can't kill him for whatever reason, we probably can because we have a Ranger with a sword, plus a ton of grenades and shots that just go off on him. But if we can't kill him for whatever reason, this person is going to be in the middle of our squad, point blank to us. The sniper rifle won't really have a good chance to hit. Plus, the pistol does like P damage, so we'll be completely fine. Unless it rolls max damage and crits on like the rookie. I don't think you can actually kill. So we should be fine. Let's keep on going and get ready for the mission. Alright then guys, let's get started here, shall we? So the first thing that we're going to do is we're going to cover as much distance as we can. So let's get everyone all the way up. Let's get the sniper all the way up. You don't really have to consider your moves too carefully here. Just, just move your guys up. I don't think it's worth the time to actually like deliberate where to move your people specifically. Just make sure that your sniper can shoot at something if something activates next turn. And that's all you really have to do. Now, nothing shows itself, so let's move our guys outwards. First pod right up there, let's get ready to take care of those guys. Open that door, get all the way up. Alright, the sectoid's gonna move upwards. We want to kill the trooper first because the trooper is the one who's gonna shoot at us. The sectoid is just going to use psionics as long as he can't get a flank on anyone. And that's the important thing to remember. So we got 100% right there. Finish him off, please. Six damage right there on top of that trooper, and he is completely dead. Let's see what the sectoid does. Sectoid actually does nothing because he's actually not active right now. Let's make sure he's active by moving forward. Let's run the sniper all the way up. And get the sectoid's attention. You know, buddy, we just killed your friend there. You might want to actually get ready for a fight. Now, he runs all the way back there. He can get a flank onto our ranger if... Ooh, that might not be okay. Alright, we might have to throw a grenade on this guy and just try to kill him this turn. If we can get enough damage on him, he'll probably run back to his teammates also. I'm assuming that he has teammates back there and the AI is usually, I believe, if the last one's alive. I've noticed that they seem to run away more if they're injured, although I'm not sure if that's actually part of the tree. But, um, usually if they're the last one's alive and there's a teammate pod close by, they will run to it. So let's just get some injuries on this guy. And we might even be able to kill him, no problems. Let's find out. Get some damage right there. Take another shot. 81%. 5 damage. We might not even let him go home because we might just be about to kill him right now. Take this time to overwatch because you already made your blue move. He's going to run all the way back there and try to not pull that overwatch. And he is going to go for the psionics right there. He doesn't actually get a flank on this guy because apparently he can't see from up there. So that's pretty good for us. One mind control right there. That's completely fine. We'll be able to kill this guy no problems at all. Our specialist is going to move upwards and hunker down. You are about to get lit on fire, actually. Well, that's not what I wanted to see. <laughs> Alright, how do we get to the sectoid right now? I can't actually get to the sectoid from here. I can get a grenade onto him, though. I think grenade is going to be the answer right now. If this shot here doesn't land. Well, let's take a shot over there, 54. See if it lands. It does land, so we don't have to waste a grenade. Great. I am going to take this time to jump this guy all the way down to here. He's going to get lit on fire, but I can hunker him down and remove the fire, so that should be fine. Let's get you all the way back here. Get your head down. Remove that fire. Now we gotta figure out where we can hack it from. We can hack it from, like, back here, it says. So back here is pretty good. Back here is also pretty good. We could even blow a hole open in this wall and hack it from there if we really needed to. So let's for now move upwards. We have this giant wall in front of us, so we shouldn't be making contact out there. That should be safe. Take the time to reload and overwatch with everyone else. And we'll see how far this gets us. Let's actually move everyone into position and get ready for a fight. I'm just going to move everyone up a little bit closer. Now then. 
We can also apparently get it from up here, actually. Interesting. Let's move out there. We might activate more pods, but if we can get the objective, that should be fine. Now then, we're lucky that that pod back there didn't activate. They're actually behind that wall, so that's fine. We just have to fight through it if, um, if they did activate. There's a good chance that you might lose the first mission, and it's actually fine. You can probably pull through even if you did lose the first mission, so don't feel bad if you lose it. Like, there's no, there's no shame in just, like, playing through it, you know? There's nothing wrong with just playing through. Now, we want to make sure that we spend all our actions on quality moves, so the first thing that we should do, actually, is kill this captain. So let's get that grenade going. Blow up that captain. I don't want that mark onto our team. We've got three damage on that guy, and he is completely exposed. Let's move forward and get ready to take care of this guy. We saw that there was a pod back there, because the game bugged out and gave us the info, even though it wasn't really supposed to, so that's pretty good for us. All we gotta do is move forward and get ready to do some killing right now. So, I can get this guy right up here. Let's see if this rookie can score the kill on the captain. Go for it, rookie. 68 on that captain. Can you get him? Does actually get the captain. Nice work. Captain is completely dead. Then after that, let's get our ranger all the way up. With this, we can have everyone in full cover. So even if these guys shoot back at us, they only have a 15% chance to land. They have to land both of their 15% shots if they actually want to kill someone. Plus 15 or 65 minus 40... No, 25, actually. I was wrong about that. They have to land two 25% shots. Which is still not very high for them, so that's completely fine by me. Let's move you all the way back here. I don't actually know if you get the full cover bonus or the half cover bonus against them. I believe if they're on this side of the 45 degree, it's going to count as a full cover bonus. I could be wrong, but just take that shot anyways. One shot does crit with three. Nice work. Alright, let's see how they react. One guy's going to move upwards. They don't get any aim bonuses from moving upwards, so keep that in mind. And they don't get good angle bonuses either, so... In this range, this is actually the ideal situation for our squad here. What I'm going to do right now is I'm actually going to hack that workstation so I don't have to worry about it anymore. Network shutdown is imminent. Having a specialist on missions like these is so, so very important. Especially if you start off with the tutorial mission. I find it really interesting how enabling the tutorial actually makes the game harder because you don't actually have your starting um, hero class. Having like a Templar or like a Skirmisher on a map like this, or even a Reaper, would just make everything that much easier. But... We have a couple of shots here that we could take. I want to save that flashbang up for the sectoid, possibly. I think I mostly want to hit that guy, but I can't really get that guy. Unless I jump over here. We'll get the half cover bonus as we move across here, even if he gets his overall shots against us, so... Worst case scenario, that is the plan. I'm going to start by taking free shots with you guys first. That does connect with that shot, so that means you can just take this shot over here. If you don't connect it, we can run the overwatch the ranger. That's completely fine by me. And we do actually connect the shot, doesn't get the kill, but that at least it cancels the overwatch for us to run all the way back over here. And we can take a flank shot just like that. 84%. Item, nice work. Even if we didn't connect that shot, he would have ran away to his teammates. I doubt he would have actually gone for a flank. In fact, he couldn't even reach the flank, I believe, because he had to run all the way back over here and around the box and back here. So, overall, we were in a very good spot. So... Let's move upwards. We know that if we won't reveal them from over here, we probably won't reveal them from up over there. I could be wrong about that. Let's find out. Let's find out how wrong I am about this. There we go. We're completely right about it. Now then, at this moment, we should take this time to reload everyone, make sure everyone's ready for action, and just overwatch. We want to make sure that we are overwatching on every single part of this turn just for any moment. If they start walking towards us, we can get free shots at them. Just like that. One shot over there does not connect. High ground shot over there does not connect once again. Nice try. And here we go. We've got double troopers and sectoids. All we have to do is kill the double troopers, and then we'll kill the sectoid right afterwards. Alright, double troopers right over there. We do have a grenade on this guy, so we can use that grenade if necessary. Um, in fact, we have a flank with the rookie from over here. This is the last pod on an easy mission. There's usually around eight enemies, three pods, nothing particularly dangerous. Take that 65%. We do connect it and we do crit it. Nice work. Move the ranger all the way up. I want to make sure the ranger is within range to slash at the sectoid, just in case he minds controls the sniper. So get that 75% going. One shot over there. Does it score the kill? Does not actually score the kill. Very unlucky, but that's completely fine. The 
trooper can shoot at us, the worst he can do is injure someone. He can't actually kill someone. That's the important thing to realize from this. Let's get this guy up to the high ground so we can negate his half cover bonus, and we can probably actually get a 75%, because not only do we get the height advantage to cancel out the low cover, we also get a good angle bonus, which I think is pretty funny how you can actually get higher accuracy on enemies that are behind cover. Unfortunately, we don't land any of our shots though, so that's fine. Let's move our ranger all the way up and get ready to do some killing. Everyone's within full cover, so there's a pretty good chance that we won't get actually hit by this guy. And even if he does, he can't kill anyone. We've guaranteed that. He's going to go for the rookie who's isolated by himself, which is a smart move by him. But no mind control over there. Even if there was, we could easily just flashbang the sectoid. Oh, that's going to be a problem, though. The rookie actually moved. <laughs> oh, unlucky trooper. <laughs> so let me tell you guys, okay? That trooper would have came over here and killed him next turn. <laughs> but the funny thing is, um, he actually landed that shot. Now, it's a 65% chance to hit, minus the 20 from the half cover, minus another 30 because of panic. Oh, apparently it's 35 now, he only has 30 accuracy. So, he actually only had a 10% chance to get that trooper, and then out of that 10% chance, he had to roll 4 damage or higher, and he got it all! <laughs> I can't tell if this is the luckiest rookie, or like... I don't even know. But take that shot though. Get that sectoid. There's the four damage. That sectoid's about to die. Nice work. We don't even have to go for the slash on the 88. We can just go for the shotgun shots. Or actually, no, that's still just as bad. 88 right there, I think I'll take it. Let's throw it out on the evac point just in case. Whenever you're going to go for a YOLO flank and you don't need all your troops anymore for the remainder of the mission, just throw it out in the evac zone and then just go for the flank. And yep, just like that. That's why we went for that. That's why we did that, because we knew we were going to miss. I knew we were going to miss, guys. We just knew it. Take the 79 over there. Does actually score the kill. No evac necessary. Whenever you take yellow flanks like that, as I said before, just make sure, make, make sure that you have a way of dealing with it. Make sure you have a backup plan to like fall back on just in case you screw that up. And that was our plan. Nice work to the squad. Very good mission there. And we are going to head on back home. Let's do a bit more strategic layer thinking. And next episode, we are going to go on probably, I think it's the Lost and Abandoned mission, actually. So we'll have that to look forward to. But for now, though, let's welcome back our veterans over here. Now then, Ranger over here ranks up, gets the Blade Master. This is a very integral perk. Right now, because of the Reaper class itself, Phantom is no longer a necessity on your first Ranger. Just take Blade Master and just cut everything. It has plus 10 aim, plus 2 extra damage. That's like almost a guaranteed kill on every sectoid that you go on to, and it's like guaranteed massive damage on it. It's gonna live with, with like only 2 or 1 HP no matter what. Blade Master is just so important for deleting key targets. It guarantees that you can kill regular troopers with one slash. It's so, so very important. Make sure you take that. Rookie over here gets promoted into Grenadier, that's good for us, and he's gifted actually. Now we don't have to worry about that other Grenadier that was currently out for an entire month or something. Entire year, I don't actually know. Now Specialist, I don't really care much for this class, you can really take whatever, I've seen both of these be useful. Um, when you're fighting the Assassin, she oftentimes bleeds out a lot of people, so Medical Protocol is actually not a bad choice. Normally I am completely against support um, perks, but versus the Assassin, this is like keeping your people alive so they can keep on fighting. I think that's actually very important. Combat protocol is also pretty good too though. Helps you deal with those mechanical units that you'll find throughout the entire game. As well as just getting off guaranteed damage at some point throughout the campaign. Doesn't really matter. I won't rank that perk up just yet so I can figure out what I want later on. And let's keep on rolling. Alright, we've got our very first engineer. We are going to put that first engineer to work in the alien debris over here. So there we go. Let's get him to work just like that. Alright then. So, we are going to go back to our supplies right now. Let's go back to it. We also got something else. Oh no, no, we were actually doing rookies right there. Let's finish up on rookies. Supply scans aren't really worth it. You don't really need them in Legendary. You won't go through your supplies that quickly. You'll go through alloys and Illyrium quickly, but not supplies. Now, we've completed our officer autopsy, so now I am allowed to build the infirmary. Or, no, I completed biotech. So now I can do officer and guarantee that I can get the proving grounds up quickly. Let's do that first because it is inspired and it only takes five days. There's no reason not to do it. 
All right, let's turn this up to slow-mo times three, and let's keep on scanning. Slow-mo times three, in case you guys were wondering, that's a console command to increase the speed of the animations. All right, but captain is ours. Good stuff. Ooh, this is a good one. Now, when it comes to breakthroughs, you want to be a little bit careful with them. They're actually a pretty big time sink of, like, ten days. That's actually pretty big. Stuff like this, though, is always pretty good. Anything that increases your damage output by one is, like, usually pretty worth going for. So, we are probably going to go for this, even though I probably should go for resistance comms. I think it's worth going for the improved sniper rifle, so let's get that going. I think anything that gives you plus one damage is huge early game. So let's say, for example, a uh, assault rifle, right? An assault rifle does four damage on average. If you add one damage onto it, that's basically a 25% damage increase, 125%. That's huge. And if you've ever played Long War, any of the Long Wars, Long War 1 or Long War 2, you'll know that there are actually perks on the perk tree that are just guaranteed to increase your damage by one. And those perks are always, always really good to have. Finish up on those rookies though. Alright, three more rookies over there, and let's keep on going. Now then, scientist. Much more worth than that supply, so I'm gonna go for the scientist next. This is a really good one. But, with that, we are going to unlock the next mission. This will be the faction missions. So, we will be back tomorrow, or not tomorrow, um, just whenever I release the next episode, I guess. Next time I release the next episode, we are going to be going on... Operation Lost and Abandoned. So, let's get a team out there, and we will end today's episode. Now, when it comes to Lost and Abandoned, I'd say sending out rookies isn't too bad of an option, but the biggest problem with doing this is that there's a chance that the assassin actually just knocks out your rookie right away. Um, also, sending out things like sharpshooters isn't a bad idea either, because you can get guaranteed damage. Rangers and sharpshooters are pretty good, but if you don't want to risk their lives on this mission versus the assassin, you can just choose to bring rookies. There's nothing wrong with bringing rookies, and I'm going to do just that. So let's grab a couple of rookies here. I could bring the grenadier, but I don't want to risk the grenadier getting injured. I want to make sure all of our like good veteran troopers are ready for action. I might consider bringing the ranger just to rank him up, though. I think the ranger can have... Yeah, the ranger has 6 HP. The assassin can't actually knock out the ranger, I'm pretty sure, so... I think it should be fine to bring the ranger on this mission. Now, the biggest problem is that he is tired. There's a chance that he might build up Fear of the Chosen or something like that. But I'm willing to risk it just so I can get an early sergeant, so I can get squad size 1, I think. I think working towards squad size 1 is... Is it? Yeah, it's... It's worth it to actually risk this, I think. Let's bring the ranger. And there we go. Alright then. But, thank you guys very much for watching, though. Hope you guys enjoyed the episode, and if you guys did enjoy it, don't forget to like. It really helps out the channel. And if you want to see more of the series, subscribe. I also stream on twitch.tv at twitch.tv slash ronar1 so if you guys want to go check out me playing live you can go there but thank you guys very much for watching though and next time we will be back to handle the tutorial mission and along with our first encounter with the chosen assassin I'll see you guys till next time and bye bye